Okay, welcome all. Let's get uh, chatting. Well, the idea is I do most of the chatting here, but feel free to ask questions if you have any. This session is about chatting with Skype for Business, and it will really be focused on the client side of Skype for Business. Um, if any one of you has a Skype for Business who uh, administers it, Skype already has a bunch of commandlets. It's one of the best in um, the field of, well, how much coverage Microsoft gives for the administration of the product. But on the client side, we have hardly anything. And that bugged me a bit. Um, so that's what this presentation will be about. Um, but first, the agenda will be really simple. We check why, I tell you, uh, I show you how, and we do a summary at the end. Any questions? <laughs> that's what I'm going to talk about now. Thank you. So, first one. That's a picture about one of my, well, maybe not so favorite applications. It's called Outlook. Outlook has this awesome feature that you can send digital letters to the other side of the world within seconds. It's, it's epic. But it went wrong somewhere. Somewhere, Microsoft decided once you get an email, you should also get a pop-up. And that's when people thought, oh, wait, now we can also use this as a notification system. So you see my mailbox. I got, well, 2,300 emails from, well, our built uh, environment. And JIRA is even more annoying with the over 1,300 or uh, 3,100 emails. So I think email is a really shitty notification process in a way. I mean, there are lots of products that, for example, tell you over email when something goes wrong. But if something goes really wrong, I, want, I don't want to look at it when I check my mailbox. I want to look at it now. I want to know that now. So it would be nice if we would have some kind of way that the product would check, hey, is Daniel actually, actually present? Is he able to receive my message? And then send the message instead of doing it afterwards. So that's the first why. Second why is uh, Skype for Business endpoints. At our company, we uh, got a few of these great Microsoft Service Hubs. So really awesome devices to work with, super user-friendly. And unfortunately, the only thing Microsoft was thinking about when designing this product is how can we make it as user-friendly as possible. So if we got user-friendly here, and management all the way over here to think about it, Microsoft only thought about here. It's only about user and not about manageability. So what happened to us when we got in the office? It looked like that. No way for me to figure out, hey, this device isn't online at the moment. So we could not be proactive there. But then I thought, hey, I actually know when this device is online, right? If it shows me presence in Skype, if it's, I see that it's available, then I can easily monitor that as well. So I thought, okay, let's dive into the automation of the client for that part. The second one, we had some other endpoints that had favorites you could manage. And the way the favorites man manages is the same as you create a group in your Skype business client and you add members to it. But there's no way to do that in a programmatically way. So, you, well, if you want to do that for all the devices, you have to do it manually. And I think we all agree that manual work isn't something we are, are excited about. And I'm not as well. So that's reason number two. I got another one. And that's a story about, uh, well, the, the character I will call Marco. And you probably all have Marco in your organization as well. This is the guy that, after the weekend, probably had too much fun, don't remember his password anymore, and checks in with you. Hi, Daniel. Can you reset my password for this HR application? <sighs> sure, again? What shall I make it this time? So what about when we could actually move this to a chatbot. And so we can tell Marco, hey, just ask this bot 
if you want to reset your password, and it will also reset it for you. Because the beauty here is, Marco is already authenticated. We know Marco is actually Marco since he signed in with his zip address on the front end server. So the beauty there, we have an authenticated user. If we have a chatbot that we can easily create, well, then he's able to reset his own passwords without me having to write some, some fancy web front end for him to do that. So let's dive in and how that all works. And that's where I will go over to the demos since basically everything, the rest I have is all code. One more thing before we start, uh, this is all code based on uh, Skype for Business on-premise. So it will work, work in Link as well. Um, as far as I understood from the documentation from Microsoft, this should work for Skype for Business online as well. Although the authentication part will be a bit different there, but I didn't have the chance to test that. So what we will be talking to with PowerShell is the UCWA, the Unified Communications Web API. And that's, well, what Sky, a REST service that Skype for Business hosts, so we can easily communicate it with PowerShell. And that API supports JSON, and well, I like JSON. So let's dive in. Is this uh, readable in the back? A little bit ago? Okay. Like that? Okay, cool. Okay. So the first part we need to do is auto discovery. This is also what your Skype business client does when you want to sign in. And we basically have two choices here. Uh, we either query the link discover internal record, which we do first. And if that doesn't work, we fail back to the link discover record. So I will first initialize my zip domain, tell, it, tell the API I want JSON here, and then do the auto discovery part. And we see here, I got my Skype business server back from the auto discovery. And I will store the root URI since all uh, other URIs in Skype for business are all relative. So we need to have a reference for us so we know, okay, this is the front end server we need to go to in all the other requests. So let's go there. So stored my Skype for business front end server. The next part is, okay, I need to authenticate now. So I already stored my credentials and I can now build up the URI for the OAuth token and here we set it to use the Windows authentication method. I said, so this will probably be different in Skype for Business Online. So now let's get a token from the service. And here we got our access token. And that's uh, something we will store in the header. So this is the header we will send in all subsequent requests to the API. So it knows we are authenticated. Next part is then, um, we need to create some kind of application context. and. This is something you can compare with the Skype business client that runs on, on your desktop, but then in the remote API. So this is the point of reference where we do all the, well, we search for contacts, we start a message, we stop a message, etc. So if we want to set up that application, we first need to assign it with an, uh, uh, a GUID. And that GUID needs to be well, the, the same for every user on each device you run it. So I'm running it on my laptop and on a server. That GUID needs to be the same, but if you run it on a different device, on the same device, that GUID needs to be different. So I thought, okay, let's just generate a random GUID and put in the username as a default for, uh, to make it unique. So let's set that up. and then create the application. So now we should have an application here. Yes, we do. And as you can see in the applica application, there are all kinds of 
uh, well, details about, okay, I'm signed in as Skybot now. And we can also see that we have links to all the other details in the Skype client, so my groups, my group membership, what are my contacts. So this is all accessible from this object. To work with this object, I thought, okay, um, so I have a few things that I, I need always. So I need that root URI, I need my authentication header, I need this application context. So let's make one variable where I store this all, and that's something I can later then reuse in all my other scripts that also use this. So let's set up the context. And in the context, I'm also storing the events and the ongoing conversations. That's something that we will fill later. Um, an event is everything that happens in Skype where you are, well, notified by something. Um, so when I start a conversation, that is an event that is sent to the remote end. If I start typing, then, well, the other end also sees, hey, then you'll start typing. So that's also an event. If I change my presence and somebody is subscribed to get notifications of that, that's also an event. So it's really everything else, or everything that Sky for Business notifies me is event related. So that's why I also stored the next event in here. And that is this event. And well, what Sky for Business will do me when I request an event, it gives me back two items. One is the event itself, and the second one is the next event to query. So I know which event to query next. Okay, so how does that look when we're looking at these events? Um, first of all, for an event, you can set a timeout. Uh, the lowest number you can set is 180. And that means that if there is, is nothing going on within 180 seconds, the Skype for Business front-end server will just return an empty event with only the next. Okay. And that's a, well, a nice way for me to see, well, at least, okay, we still have an ongoing communication, everything is fine. So let's set that part up. And have a look at the event URI. And this will be the event URI we will start to query. I won't do that now, since that will only result in a 180 sec uh, seconds wait, which is not really exciting. So, but this is how the, uh, my module will query for events later on. So we have an, our auto discovery done. We set up the authentication part. We created an application. To actually start chatting, we need two more things. And that is the, well, we need to, our contact details. So we need to query the address book for the remote user. And we need to see, is that user actually present at this time? So that's the next part. In this case, uh, Marco forgot his password again. So I'll search for him. And I will set a limit on the search for 10 uh, results. Um, the maximum here is 100. And if you uh, have, or if the API returns more than the limit, then you get a notification from the API with more results available that it tells you, hey, there are more results available. So please uh, specify, uh, narrow your search. So let's set up the search UI. Let's get the contacts. Well, you already see I don't have more results available in this case. And the contact is in the embedded property. So let's put that in the variable. And let's make that a bit more prettier. So now we have our details from Marco in one nice object. So the next thing we can do with this is figure out 
Okay, so what's the presence then? For that, I will literally take a look at my own presence. So, and as you can see, I have my Skype business client open. Um, sorry that this probably won't be readable in the back, but I couldn't zoom this. Um, but, and I'm available at this moment. So if we look at the presence, we see indeed I'm online. Well, that's actually not correct. I'm busy. I'm doing a presentation. So let's see if that changes. And it did. It now notifies me. Okay, you're busy. So I now know the address of the remote user. We got the separate address from Marco, and um, we got we, where we can query his presence. So in, from now on, I could start sending messages, although it would look a bit weird to the remote end, since, well, if I look at Skype now and check my Skype bot with I'm which with a and with that account I'm signed in now, it's offline. So says offline messages only. So for that, we can set the presence of the remote account. That's actually something that's pretty tricky. So I got a nice screenshot from the Microsoft from MSDN. And that's, well, if you set yourself online in the Skype business, in the API, you also need to send a my, report my activity at least every four minutes to keep that online status. Otherwise, the API will assume you're, well, away, and then the client will show you as in, in status away. But of course, for a bot, that doesn't really make any sense. So I have a solution for that. I'll come back to that later. So now, for this one, we will sign with online. Yes. Yeah. Um, I th that was created in front, so that's just a Skype-enabled Active Directory user. I already had that set up. Any more questions? Not at all. No, this is really uh, only the account. This is all out of the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, that's the that's the beauty of this. You can really start using this right away. I you don't even need to notify your admin. I mean, he can see you have logged on because um, if we go back to the, where we created the application, we have this user agent, and the user agent tells the well that needs to be allowed on the the Skype for Business server. But obviously, you can fill in anything here. Huh? So if you make yours look like Skype for Business Client, yeah, it probably works in your environment as well. So back to setting presence. I will set my availability on, to online. I already did that. And when setting presence, we need to figure out one thing first, and that is if this user already made himself available to the Skype, to the front end. So the first thing you need to do is do a make me available call, as it is called in the API, and that will tell the front end server this user now, well, sets itself available, and after that you can just change your presence. So uh, the script figures it out by just trying to do uh, a, a set me the a presence uh, call, so to only set presence, and if that fails, I will get a nice message with uh, which I convert to JSON with the code make me available required. So if I now execute this part, then make me available should be true, and it is. Thank you, demo gods. <laughs> okay, so now let's now set the availability for this user.
And when we look at the Sky for Business client now, we will see the Skybot has become online. Woohoo, indeed. <laughs> Thank you again, Democrats. <laughs> I'm quite pleasant. Um, and well, if we want to keep that online, we also should report my activity every four minutes. And obviously this is something that's a bit of annoying when you're just running a script. So I'll come back to that later. So starting a conversation. Um, that's the next part. We now know, okay, we have uh, a setup. We know the address. We have the presence. We have set my own presence. So we can now actually start a conversation. For the conversation, I set up my own zip address because I will send this message from the Skybot to myself. And that happens in this request body where we also need to pass some string from, uh, the, uh, from the API so it knows this event is sent by me. Um, if we set that up now, and I will store that conversation in the conversation hash table we set up earlier. So if we execute this, we will actually get that I am is start, uh, starting a, a chat with me. Um, but there are no messages in here yet. This is just setting up the conversation. So if we now look at sending the message, we will send, hey there, please come for you. And so that the message uh, you or I, we got back from the conversation. So if everything works correctly, I should now have a message. Yes, okay. So that was a 10 stand, stand step process to actually get a message into a window. Quite cumbersome. So, and I'm not standing here to go uh, to help you through this whole process. I think it's useful to know how it works, but to make it really usable, I converted it all into a module which you can work with, which is <laughs> thank you. So a look at the module. I already imported it. Uh, we have a few commands in there. That, uh, and the, the first one, most important one, is new Skype from business client context. This sets up everything that we require to set up a conversation. Next, we have receive, receive and send uh, a chat message. And in there already implicitly is also the building of the conversation itself. So if we have a look at the new Skype to Business Client context, I also have a solution in there for a few other things. Because as mentioned, we need to, uh, every four minutes, we need to send this report my activity call. And we have a token that is actually, of course, going to time out in eight hours. So we need some way to refresh that. So what the Skype Business Client contact also does is in the background, it sets up a few run spaces to, um, well, keep a track at the, it, it looks at, you, at the incoming events. It checks out uh, the authentication or the, your token if it didn't expire yet. And it will, um, come Daniel, the last one, tell them. I uh, didn't remember what it did at last. Uh, let's, let's just have a look at it. Um, so this is the part where it actually um, auto grabs all the events and does something with, with them so that can be an incoming message or a, a start of a conversation. So here it processes incoming messages. Um, here we process incoming inf uh, conversation invitations. So we auto accept a conversation. And of course, we also need to know when a conversation stops. So we delete it from 
the concentration is has stable. So here we monitor for the lifespan of the, the token. To work, uh, if it does, it, it uh, didn't expire yet. And the next port. Oh yeah, that's also the, that's of course set in the the send. Um, sorry, the, um, this one has two run spaces. If you make yourself available, I set up a, set a, a third run space that will do the my report my activity calls. So, what I mentioned in the beginning as well is managing favorites. And if you have a, a, a Skype ena enabled device, uh, like a Polycom Trio, for example, they have this option for favorites on the device. And how that works is that they actually, that. in the Skype client, they, they create groups and store contacts in there. So that's also something that my module can do. And well, let's set up a new Skype for business application context for me first. So that's that. And let's create a group. As you can see, group got created right away. We can add a member to it. And then Marco is added as a member of the group. Of course, we can have multiple groups and group two got created. And the nice thing about this is also it's all web API. So if you want to know what happens in the background in my code, just run it in verbose mode and you will see what all is going on there. So I'm querying for groups with this group ID. I'm querying for the user Marco, adding it to the group and then querying for the user Skype and also adding it to the group, which is, pretty useful if you ever want to debug one of the bugs that probably are in there. Okay, um, adding of the users done. We can also remove them again. The API is a bit slow with that sometimes, so let's just execute this bit. In one go. And now everything got cleaned up again, except for the Skype bot that I didn't remove yet. I, I destroyed my application, so I cannot no longer remove that user. No worries, it can stay there. Okay. So now how easy it is to chat. So what we did in the previous 30 minutes, I will now do in 30 seconds. Set up a an application context again. Set my Skype for Business availability online. And send a message. Voila. Obviously. I can also receive messages now. So if we have a look at the incoming messages. We will see, well, in the sentence I just typed. So we can now use this in, in a programmatic way. We'll have a look at all the background processes that have now been started. These are all the background code processes currently running to enable this. So the event run space, the token expiration, and the report my activity so the user stays online. The nice thing is when we now remove the application context, this will also get uh, disposed, so they won't pollute your environment. Um, we should have an ongoing conversation now. Yeah, we do, with Daniel. And if I close the conversation on this side, it will send over an, an event to the uh, run space running here, and that will clean up the conversation. So if we now look again, there's nothing in there. So it keeps track of the conversations in this way. So let's remove that. Now for the fun to actually begin, we can of course set up a chatbot since we have everything in PowerShell now. So let's go to Skype. My Skybot is available indeed. Let's see 
I am choice. Hi, Bob. Ah. Um, well, I, I, I don't think this is how it should reply, right? Uh, come on. I'm in. Ta da! Now, so it really, well, it, it, this is, of course, this is a bit hard coded, but it understands what I'm trying, what, what I'm telling. So yeah, if I ask it, uh, hi. Repeating your message, my message. Now we can also make it even more smart. So let's ask this. Wow, can create DMSA records for me. Well, let's see. Uh, and let's look up VSCon. Okay, I don't have a record VSConf at the moment, so let's create VSConf. Okay, what's the zone to create it in? Well, let's push what want to know since that's my demo environment. And let's give it an IP address. And yes, that is correct. So now it will create the DNS record in DNS. And if everything works well again, we have now a record in DNS. So, and now uh, let me see. Oh my God, the persistent chat beast. So, this is all really nice UC WA web calls that we can make to get these messages, which is pretty awesome. But is anybody of you using persistent chat as well? Who won? Okay, I will show, I show you anyway. Persistent chat is a whole different kind of beast since um, persistent chat in Skype for Business are these uh, rooms you can create where, well, um, the chat actually, it preserves the chat, chat history. Unfortunately, that doesn't have a web API, so we need some other way to talk to that. And that's something we can do using the Unified communication, Communications Managed API, which is kind of horrible to work with, and Microsoft doesn't really want to support it anymore since they got Microsoft Teams now, and they're going forward, well, with a different product. But in my case, I needed to post a persistent chat message as well. So let's see if that also works. I wrote a module for that part as well. So let's first connect into the module. I need to stop the bot. Let's import module, set credentials, and I can now connect to the endpoint. And if we uh, look here already, I have a persistent chat room called VSConf. We should have an endpoint object now, indeed. And we can now also create a session to that chat room. And that means we should now have an active session. And 
Next, let's send a precision chat message to the wind. So let's check the sky client again. We indeed we see that one new message has, has arrived. And well, we make that a little bit more readable. Yes, that works as well. Um, this does require a few things to be installed if you want to use this, since uh, it requires the UCMA version 4 and the runtime to be installed on the system that you are running this. So this doesn't work out of the box and without any, any installing anything. Obviously, I can also receive messages from my persistent chat room. So my last message indeed was during persistent chat. So let's clean that up and disconnect from persistent chat. That concludes the demo. So let's go to the back to the slides. So as promised, a summary at the end. Um, I put this all in a, into a module, as said, and the module is now also um, ava uh, available on GitHub. So you can find it in my GitHub, uh, GitHub page. Uh, feel free uh, to use it, contribute to it if you like. Um, I really would like to hear what your ideas are on this. So what want you, uh, do you want to build with it? Uh, what, what did you build with it? What works for you? What doesn't work for you? Um, just excited to, uh, to hear all your opinions. Any questions? Uh, the, the web API supports it. Uh, I didn't build it yet. So feel free to contribute uh, to the module, but the web API does support it, yes. Um, yeah, and you can look up a lot of documentation how to work with the web API on MSDN. And the documentation is actually pretty good for this one, I would say. So that's probably why I could, could also figure it out. Any other questions? Oh yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, that's, as I said, that's just a, a bit hacked in at the moment. <laughs> so it's, uh, but yeah, sure, I can show that, no worries. Uh, so this is uh, how the chatbot works. Um, let's uh, hit uh, 12 there to make it a bit bigger. So basically what I, I said, okay, it just, uh, it signs in. Uh, it, it grabs the incoming messages because, well, for each message it needs to do something, of, co of course. And, um, well, by default it, ends, it ends up here, so that's why I could have it reply to my messages. Um, well, and it also, I forgot this one, but it could, call, it could also write a file to disk. And I, well, you understand anything is what you can write in PowerShell, this, the bot can do for you. So when I asked it to create a DNS record, I, well, uh, it replied with a, a DNS record, and then I set the DNS, co the, the conversation mode to DNS A record, and that it knew because I have it there as well. So it ends up in the conversation, and then in the conversation I just tell it, okay, go to the next step of the conversation. And if I answer yes at the end, it will actually create a DNS record, and if I, don't, if I enter something else than yes, so no or nope or whatever, it would have canceled the creation of the DNS record. And that's how the whole chatbot works in, uh, in PowerShell. But yeah, that's all a bit hard coded, so uh, I guess uh, for real production environments, you need to be a little more well aware of what your user has to say. But another thing I was thinking about was just uh, let it respond to the message help and then show all it, the comments it can re, uh, receive. So that would also make it very usable for end users to work with. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, again, that's also something the API support. 
Uh, but I really built this one for one-to-one -one conversations. Um, I didn't test it with multiple conversations, to be honest, uh, with a, a conversation. So not sure if that will work out. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and if, if my conversation handler, uh, handler can keep up with that, because obviously then you have a conversation with multiple parties. Not sure if that will go correct in the current code. But I heard somebody was going to code this. <laughs> oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so they can keep themselves entertained. <laughs> nice. Good <laughs> question. Ah, oh, okay. No, I I didn't. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, cool. Any other uh, questions? Then I want uh, to conclude my presentation. Thank you.